So you ain't got to sit down yet. It's fine. <laughs> How's everybody doing this morning? Well, it's uh, it's like 10.58, so I, I don't know whether we just need to sit here and talk amongst ourselves or go on and get started. I mean, is anybody hungry or ready to get out of here? He's only got 16 pages of notes, so better get started. <laughs> All right. So there's a debate going on up here about this first song we're going to sing. Are you washed or are you washed? <laughs> if my mother was here, Grayson, are we are we live now? Oh, great. Uh, if my mother was here, it would be are you washed? Miss Glenn, yeah. Yeah, I say washed unless I'm mad. You get in there and wash that laundry now. So, won't you stand? Page 136. Wow. Wow. What happened? Wow, I'm going to have to wash my shorts. <laughs> have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb, are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Last verse. Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning. Good morning. We're glad to see you here today. Welcome to Franklin to Baptist Church. And we've got some special guests with us this morning. we got all the kids' praise group with us this morning. And if you're normally in kids' praise, would you stand up? All our children who are normally in kids' praise, would you stand up? Yeah, well, we're glad to have you this morning. Thank you for joining us today. We're Certainly glad to have you. I heard y'all had hot chocolate in Sunday school today. Is that right? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah. Well, great. That's awesome. Um, your announcements are on the back of your bulletin. Uh, just a couple things let me point out to you. Uh, we're going to return to the Little White Church two weeks from today on March the 13th. And I uh, hope that you'll make sure that you're with us. We'd like to pack it out that day. Uh, the day before, we're going to have a prayer vigil in the church. Uh, we're going to open up at 9 a.m. that morning. We're going to pray all day. We want to pray for our community, for our nation, for our staff, uh, for you as individual. And we're asking that you sign up for 30-minute prayer blocks beginning at 9 uh, that morning there's a sign up sheet out in the lobby and if you just sign up for a 30 minute prayer time all day long uh, you can come as an individual or you can sign up to come as a husband or wife or as a team or a couple or a group it doesn't matter 
But I'd appreciate it if we could fill that day up all day long. Pray, 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 pray. Prayer changes things. Uh, we've got a lot of people who are lost in our community. A lot of people who've dropped by the wayside since COVID hit. Um, I will have a I will have a prayer uh, calendar showing you how to pray and who to pray for that day. A prayer guide. So please, if you can help us out that day, to just give 30 minutes of your time on that Saturday to come by the church. It'll be open and come in and pray uh, before th uh, before th we open up on the 13th. Also out in the lobby, it's a church roster. We're trying. We haven't had a complete church roster with updated names and phone numbers and addresses since 2017. We're trying to get that together so we can pass it out to each of you so you'll have a name and phone number and address of everybody in the church. So as you leave today, just walk by the desk out there, see if your name's on there, make sure we have the correct information for you. If it's correct, you don't have to do anything, just leave it alone. If there's incorrect, please change it and give us the correct information, and uh, we'll make sure in a few weeks we'll have that roster printed and handed out to everybody in church. Do not remove those from the desk out there. A couple years ago, we put them out there, and somebody took them home with them. Do not take them away from there. Leave them there. Just correct the information uh, if it's incorrect. Also, uh, we have purchased an ice maker. We voted to do that last week. It has been ordered. It should be here sometime this week. But that money was not in the church budget. So if you can help us out by uh, donating a little bit of extra money toward that, just make your check out to the church and write on the bottom of the check ice maker and put it in the box at the back. That would greatly be appreciated. And uh, if you haven't made your camp deposit, you need to do that today. You see Tara talk to her about that. Um, okay, that's it. Uh, birthdays or anniversaries, anybody? We missed one. Who, Debbie? Yeah. Becky? Becky? Becky Lucas? It's in the past. We don't play that game around here. So Becky's got a birthday. Glenda, you've been married 62 years, did you tell me? That other half's at home. Well, that's okay. We'll still recognize your anniversary. So uh, let's sing to Becky first since she banged on the organ a while ago. Okay. Happy birthday to you happy birthday to you may the lord bless and keep you happy birthday to you and we'll sing to you now miss glenda happy wedding anniversary happy wedding anniversary happy wedding Take a minute and welcome each other to church this morning.
I was just going to let y'all go this morning. See, wasn't that nice of me? Sun's out. But it's time now. 16 pages, remember. 135. I love it. This is going to sound really bad, and she's going to kill me, but I love it when somebody hits a wrong note, like, and it's bad, like it's a real bad one, because Becky goes, what? What is it? I don't understand. (laughs) What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow. Last verse. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. Well, y'all do good this morning. 410. Where's that at? Did you find yours? Good deal. <laughs> when peace like a river attendeth my way. Sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well. Beautiful. You may be seated. We ask now that you please prepare your hearts for worship. Please open your hymnals to 476 while they're playing and read the words to the song.
it's gorgeous, isn't it? Shiny way, I'm in that glory land way. Heaven is near and the way groweth clear for I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is near and the way groweth clear for I'm in that glory land way. Listen to the call, the gospel call today. Oh, get in that glory land way. Wanderers, come home. Oh, hasten to obey and get in that glory land way. Onward I go, rejoicing in His love. For I'm in the glory land way. Soon I shall see Him in that home above. For I'm in. The glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in that glory land way. Heaven is near and the way groweth clear. For I'm in that glory land way. Thank you, James. Oh. <laughs> uh, you have your Bibles, turn to Exodus chapter 17. We finish up our series on Joshua today, and we'll begin a new series next week on Peter. For the next five weeks, we'll be looking at Peter. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place, as the Lord commanded they camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. And they said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do with these people? They are all are almost ready to stone me. And then the Lord answered Moses, go out in front of the people, take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go, and I will stand there before you by the rock of Oreb. Strike the rock, and the water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the place Massa, Meribah, because the Israelites crawled, or because they tested the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? The Malachites came and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose some of our men and go out to fight the Malachites. Tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses had ordered. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. As long as Moses held up his hands, the Israelites were winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. And when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side and one on the other. So that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with a sword. And then the Lord said to Moses, Write this on a scroll as something to be remembered, to make sure that Joshua hears it. 
because I will completely blot out the name of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. He said, Because hands were lifted up against the throne of the Lord, the Lord will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his holy word. As we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, we want to remember Buster, who still suffering from his back, and Miss Joe, who's still having some problems, talked to her yesterday and this morning, Ray and Mickey, Logan, Jewel, Miss Sheila's having problems with her feet. Ricky, we're glad you're here today. Ricky's got some tests scheduled for his heart. Gina, we're continuing to pray for you. We're glad you're here. Continue to pray for Betty, for Lanny, and for Marvin, and for Carl. Carl's still having some trouble from COVID. Need to fill you in on, on what's going on with Becky. Um, we need your prayers. We need your prayers big time. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Becky and I went to the doctor and um, they scheduled some tests for Becky. She'd been having some headaches. And so Monday, um, Becky had a brain scan and because her family has a history of heart problems, they scheduled a heart scan to see if she had any calcium around her heart. Well, the brain scan came back normal, uh, which was good news. Heart scan came back normal, which was good news. But uh, with the heart scan, that hit. found a mass or a nodule on her lung. Um, at the same time, she had a colon guard that she had sent in, and it came back with some abnormalities. So the doctor feels like the colon test and the um, what they found in the lung is just not good news. So they have uh, set up an appointment with her uh, doctor to meet with the doctor on Tuesday to talk to them about the colon and uh, or a colonoscopy. And then she has X, uh, uh, CAT scan on Wednesday of her lung and her pelvic area and her stomach on Wednesday to see if there's really anything there or if it's just something that is nothing. Could be a molehill. It could be something very serious. So we ask you to pray for us. Um, keep us in your prayers this week as she uh, sees her doctors and she undergoes further tests. Um, let's pray. Lord, you're an awesome God. We trust in you. We believe in you. And uh, Lord, we hold your hand as we walk through valleys. And we praise you when we stand on mountaintops. We pray for uh, all that are on our prayer list today. Each and every one. You know their issues and you know that uh, they all need to touch the master's hand. But Lord,
Lord, you know where my heart is. And Lord, we may be dealing with a molehill. Molehills can trip us up. And we may be dealing with a mountaintop. And Lord, if it's a mountain, we pray it's an easy mountain. But we just, uh, we just pray, Lord, that uh, you'll give us strength to face whatever's before us. We walk this walk before, and we'll walk it again, knowing that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. We walk it knowing that those that sit here walk it with us. And that uh, there's thousands and thousands of others who love us and will walk it with us also. We love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Me? Me? If I get it out of the way, you're yelling at me. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Preacher man talking about the end of time. Well, look, I'm ready. Now, what matter my mind? You see, I'm ain't afraid of nothing because I believe I've got a sky full of angels watching over me. You can take my possessions, you can take all my gold. Nobody but Jesus gonna take my soul. Walking through darkness, I don't need no light. My sweet Jesus gonna be my guide. Ain't afraid of nothing because I believe I've got a sky full of angels watching over me. You can take me for granted, you can take all my gold, nobody but Jesus gonna take my soul. Jesus gonna pull me out. Ain't afraid of nothing because I believe I've got a sky full of angels watching over me. You can take my possessions, you can take all my gold, nobody but Jesus gonna take my soul. Ain't afraid of nothing because I believe I've got a sky full angels watching over me ain't afraid of nothing because i believe i've got a sky full of angels watching over me thank you bonnie good job Peggy saw Olivia Deals yesterday, and Chandler's been deployed and asked us to pray for him. Um, we had our Caleb home for a few days, and he had to go back to Albuquerque, serve in the Air Force. So 
Let's pause for a minute. Let's pray, pray for the situation in Ukraine. And let's pray for all our servicemen, but especially for Chandler, Caleb. Lord, we'll never understand war. We'll never understand people not being able to get along. And, Lord, we pray for our people in Ukraine right now. Those brave people are fighting for their country and for their freedom. Those those civilians who are taking up arms just to protect their country and, and their freedom, we pray for them this morning, for for their country and for, for, for their lives. We pray for our servicemen and men and women all around the world, that you would protect them, keep them safe, not only for our, our people, but for all those who who protect freedom from from other countries also. Especially pray for, for Chandler, for our Caleb, and for people here who have loved ones in the service, Lord. We, we lift them up and ask for protection for them this morning. Thank you that we live in a, in a country where we are free. And let us never take that for granted, Father. Thank you that you set us free when you went to an old rugged cross. You suffered and bled and died there. Thank you, Jesus. And we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. There was a time of want in the desert. There was no water. And this wouldn't be the only time they were short of water. And the people began to gripe and complain. They were thirsty. Their children were thirsty. Their, their wives were thirsty. Their livestock was thirsty. And so they came to Moses complaining once again. Moses turned to God and says, What am I supposed to do, God? What am I supposed to do? They had been hungry, and now they were thirsty. Can you imagine trying to take care of the needs of three to four million people? Now, these are not my figures. This is something somebody else figured up. But to feed these people, it would take between two, about 2,000 tons of food per day. That's 4 million pounds of food each day to feed these people. Can you imagine? They said to bring that much food, it would require three freight train loads of food a mile long. That means if you were going to feed that many people each day, it would take a freight train from here almost a Point Pleasant Christian church full of food to feed them each day. Now picture that in your mind. And it says to keep them warm, it would take 4,000 tons or 8 million pounds of wood each day, and it would take a train 8 miles long to do that. So that means it would take a freight train from here to Point Pleasant of food, but to keep them warm, it would take a freight train from here to the four-way stop of wood to keep them warm and to cook that food each day. Now picture that, and I'm not through yet, but to keep people warm, not warm, but to keep them watered and keep their clothes clean and keep their livestock and them watered each day. If you're feeling about four to five gallons of water per person, per livestock, it would take 11 million gallons of water each day. That would take a freight train 1,800 miles long. That means a freight train that was stretched just about across the United States. Now, 
See, we think about them wandering around in the desert. We think about a little group of nomad people. Now, Moses had to get them across the Red Sea. You watch the, you watch the movie, right? They just kind of walk through a little narrow path across the Red Sea. Mm -mm. It says here that to get that many people across the Red Sea in one night, that it had to be at least three miles wide and the people had to be stacked up 5,000 abreast. You think Moses had all that figured out before he decided to take them across the Red Sea and into the wilderness? Each time they camped out at the end of the day, they needed a cramp campground two-thirds the size of the state of Rhode Island, about 750 mile, square miles. I'm looking at about, I don't know if Steve's counted yet, but I'm guessing about 70 or 80 people here this morning. Is that about right, Steve? I couldn't keep y'all happy if I had to. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to feed that many people, water them, keep them happy every single day? When I was at Beachmont Baptist Church, I was church administrator and associate pastor. Every time the church doors were open, there were complaints. Brother Jackie, there's no toilet paper in a men's restroom. The women, well, we have toilet paper, but it's too hard. We don't like that toilet paper. Can you... Order some that's softer for us. It's too hot in here this Sunday. It's too cold last Sunday. We don't like the songs the music director picked out. Can, you, can we sing more modern songs? Can we sing more contemporary songs? I wish the janitor would cut the grass every week. Well, he cut it too short last week, but it was too long this week. We don't like the flowers they planted in the flower bed. Can you get some that are prettier than that? Keeping 100 people satisfied is impossible. We used to have Wednesday night suppers. Somebody griped about what we ate every week. The adults had one menu, the children had another menu. If the adults didn't like what was on the adult menu, they wanted to choose from the children's menu. Then the children didn't have anything to eat because the adults ate off the children's menu. When the children got there, there wasn't anything for the children to eat. But you see, God worked all these things out. Moses didn't have to work them out. God had them worked out. And if you think God can't handle your problems, then you're wrong. Moses says, what am I supposed to do, Lord? They're thirsty. Have you ever had a kid crying in the middle of the night? I'm thirsty. What do you tell them? Shut it and go back to sleep, right? Do they? No. But I'm thirsty. Go to sleep. You'll be okay. But I'm thirsty. God told Moses, take your staff Go strike a rock and there'll be water. <laughs> yeah. So 
but there was water. And while all this is going on, while they're complaining about no water, here comes an enemy, a melech. It seems like when things can't get any worse, they do, right? King Amalek attacks. And Moses says to Joshua, choose some of our men and go out to fight the Malachites. And Joshua's like, well, that's a great idea. You send me to go fight, what are you going to do? And he says, I'm going to stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hand. He says, you go fight, I'm going to pray. Joshua goes into battle. Moses goes to the top of the hill and he begins to pray. And he holds that staff up, the same one he struck the rock with. He holds it up. And as long as he's holding it up, the Israelites win the war. But Moses gets tired. He gets tired of praying after a while. And when he drops his sword, the rod, what happens? They begin to lose the war. We are told over and over and over in the Bible to pray without ceasing. To pray without ceasing. But what happens a lot of times, folks? We pray and God doesn't answer our prayer. What do we do? We quit. We get tired. He didn't answer it the way I wanted to answer, so we just quit. We give up. Moses become tired, and he dropped his hands, and the Israelites began to lose the battle. But you see, God didn't send Moses into this all along. He sent with him two other people. Aaron and her. And when Moses become tired and his arms dropped, they found something for him to sit on. And they raised his arms, one on each side. And every time his arms would grow weary and he'd drop them, Aaron on one side and her on the other, they'd raise his arms and his right army would begin to win the war again. You see, the Israelite army, they didn't know how to fight a battle. They were traveling through the lands with women and children and herds. They didn't know anything about fighting. God did. He sent Joshua to fight the fight, 
He sent Moses to pray, and he sent Aaron and her to do what they could do. Joshua's role was to lead the battle. Moses' role was to stand on the mountaintop with his hands up. And Aaron and her's role was to hold Moses' hands. You see, we all have gifts. We all have abilities. Each person's role was necessary. Joshua. Joshua may not even know what was taking place on that mountaintop. He was too busy fighting a war. But Moses was his prayer warrior. A lot of times in life, we're too busy fighting a battle to know that people are praying for us. People are holding us up. The Lord is our banner. In Hebrew, the word is Yahweh Nissi or Yahweh Nissi. The Lord is our banner. You go in Rupp Arena, what do you see hanging in the rafters? Banners, right? National championships. You see banners recognizing former players who were great. You see names of former coaches who were great, like Adolf Rupp. In Exodus 17, 15 and 16, Moses built an altar and called it, The Lord is my banner. He says, Because hands were lifted up against the throne of the Lord, we will be at war against the Amalekites from generation to generation. He wanted to build an altar there, and he wanted to, Josh to be reminded of what took place there. He wanted Joshua to be reminded that this battle was won not by Joshua, not by the Israelites, but it was God's battle, and it was won by God and God alone. We need to remember that God is our banner. The Lord is our banner. Yahweh Nissi. The Lord is our banner. As long as we hold our hands up high, the Lord will win our battles. As long as we look up and remember who's fighting our battles, he will always be victorious. The battle was an unusual one. Nothing like it in the Bible. The strange way in which the battle was won left no doubt as to who was responsible for the victory. Only as the rod of God was held aloft did the Israelites prevail. The battle was not won by military might or superior battle plans. It was won by the power of God. We're also to be reminded that no matter who we are, that we too have an important role in God's battle plan. Aaron and her, that day, all they did was hold up Moses' hands. Our talents may not be great, 
but whatever talents we have can be used by God to do great things. While Josh was out becoming a great warrior that day, all God asked from Aaron and her was to hold up Moses' hands. Some of you sitting here today, all God asks you to do is hold up. Hold up. Hold up your pastor's hands. Hold up your worship leader's hands. Hold them up. Pray for them. Pray for your deacons. Pray for your church. I've asked you for, I've asked for 24 volunteers to go across the street and on Saturday, March the 12th, to pray for this community and for this church. How hard can that be? To give 30 minutes, 30 minutes to pray for this church and for this community. That's not very difficult to do. It takes time. It takes effort. You see, God needs you. He needs all of us. If this church is to march forward into the future, it's going to take us all. All of us giving a little bit, giving what we can to give to God so he can change this community. There's lost people in this community. There's lost souls. There's lost little boys and girls. And it's going to take us all doing a little bit, holding our hands up for God to make a difference in this community, in this church. I can't do it by myself. Jamie can't do it. The deacons can't do it. The ladies teaching on Wednesday night can't do it. They need help on Wednesday nights. They need help on Sunday morning. We got a lot of children coming. They need help. They can't do it by themselves. Somebody's got to hold their hands up and help. You can do it. You can be the ones that make a difference. Moses couldn't do it alone. Joshua couldn't do it alone. You can make a difference by just offering your time, your talent, your energy. No matter who you are, no matter what you can offer, you say, I'm not very talented. You you don't have to be talented. All you have to do is offer your time. How how talented did Moses, I mean, how talented did Aaron have to be that day or her? All they had to do was hold up arms. Sometimes the most smallest thing can be the most greatest thing. Give what you can and watch what it can do to change a church or a child's life. That's all it takes. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this message. Lord, thank you for the banner that holds up Jesus. Lord, thank you for Joshua. Thank you for Moses. Thank you for, just thank you that we can do what we can do from the very smallest to the very greatest to make a difference in the life of this church, in the life of Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we pray, amen. I'll be down front if you need to come. Won't you stand? Turn to page 321. The Savior is waiting. The Savior is waiting to enter. nothing in this world to keep you apart. What is your answer to him? Time after time he has waited before and now he is waiting again to See if you're willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants to come in. If you'll take one step toward the Savior, my friend, you'll find his arms open wide. 
receive him and all of your darkness will end within your heart he'll abide time after time is waiting before and now he is waiting again to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, help us to remember how lucky we are that we can be here to worship you today. Uh, we pray that you will be with Ukraine and our world and our nation and our leaders and our military. Just help us to help there to be a peaceful and quick end to all the strife that is in this world. Lord, we pray especially for Becky this week that you'll walk with her and hold your hand upon her and just let her have nothing but good news. Uh, guide us out all as we go through this week and help us to always be a light for you. For it's in your son's holy name I pray. Amen. Choir, do not.